Hi, this is Pastor Steve of North Hollywood First United Methodist Church. I'm grateful that you've joined us this morning on our virtual worship service. We're very grateful for the technology that allows us to gather as community in this time of pandemic distancing. In just a moment, we're going to join our voices and our hearts together to sing. We're going to hear some scripture. There will be a sermon. There will be a time for children. And I hope that this lifts your spirits and connects you to the one who is greater than us and the one who is always with us. No matter who you are or where you've been or where you've come from, you are welcome in our church. And I hope you'll check us out at www.nohofumc.org. And I hope that you will join in the words that appear on your screen and join your voices in with ours as we sing hymn number 160, Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart. light and power we come to you this day to learn of your will for our lives heal our wounds lift our spirits give us courage and confidence to boldly serve you in all that we do in Jesus name amen and now if you'll take a look at your screens you can join me in the call to worship live in God's love bring hope and peace to all whom you meet. Celebrate and rejoice. Hey kids, today I wanna to talk to you about the importance of helping others. Great thinker Martin Luther King Jr. stated that life's most persistent and nagging question was how are you helping others? In fact, he said that doing good deeds was our prime purpose. 
So I have a question. Have you ever had a moment where you felt like, oh my gosh, I just have to help. Whatever the situation was, you knew I have to help and nothing could stop me. And one thing I did to brighten up people's days over quarantine was um, deliver them Girl Scout cookies and a little card I made. So I had some extra cookies laying around and uh, I put those in little bags and I handmade and um, wrote in some cards for people and I delivered them to their houses. My mailman is such a nice guy, so I decided to do something nice for him because he's working so hard during the quarantine. Uh, I drew him a picture and left him a snack and a cool drink. Something nice my family and I did was we rode our bikes over to our friends' houses that it was their birthday, so we just sang happy birthday and stuff since they can't have a party. I could see how they were like smiling and stuff. And we also did to my science teacher and she was, she was so happy. Basically, we had a lot of life sacraments. And so we just put little notes in like a bag with a lot of encouragement. And we just gave them all around to our neighbors. Um, stay safe. I believe that that's the Holy Spirit touching your heart and encouraging you. And that's the way that Jesus can utilize us to spread God's love. During the quarantine, um, have you had an experience where someone did something kind for you or your family? How did that make you feel? I experienced something where a friend surprised us and brought over homemade face coverings and just left them on the porch. They were so cute. I was just so touched. I felt so much joy in my heart. We totally needed them, but I knew that was the Holy Spirit touching me through a friend by their kind actions and gestures. So I ask you now, what have you done during the quarantine? Um, how has the Holy Spirit been talking to you and nudging you. Jesus said, if you love me, you will do what I've taught you. And I will ask my father to send a helper to be with you and never leave you. That helper is the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us and helps us to follow Jesus. And you know, when we try to explain the Holy Spirit and how it guides us day to day, that can be a really tough thing for most people to understand. Jesus said, the world can't accept him because they don't know him and they can't see him. But you know what they can see? They can see you, they can see me, and they can see how we treat other people. Are we kind, loving, caring, generous, helpful? I've heard it said that we may be the only Bible that someone ever reads in their life. Listen to that again. We may be the only Bible that someone experiences and reads. Jesus said, if you love me, you will listen to what I command. And what does he tell us to do? He says, love one another as I have loved you. When others see how knowing Jesus changes how we treat other people, they want to know Jesus too. So listen for the Holy Spirit. Feel your heart, what it's calling for you to do. How is it nudging you? And let that guide you day to day. You'll never go wrong. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Will you join with me in prayer? Holy God, we give you thanks for this day and this week and for your empowering presence, which has allowed us to overcome any obstacles and resistance that we have faced over the course of this last week. It is your spirit which sustains us, which gives us life, and which gives us strength to endure. Today, Lord, we confess that we get tired. 
and that there are times that we feel that we cannot do what needs to be done. We confess that we have left much of your work undone. Sometimes we wonder if the good that you ask us to do makes any difference. And sometimes, Lord, we are afraid. We are afraid of being judged, of being shunned. Lord, we pray that we would not weary from doing good, from doing the things that you have called us to do. Forgive us for when we have not done them, or when we have chosen to do things that are in opposition to what you have called us to do and be. So Lord, we remember those who are without food, those who are without shelter, those who are without family, those for whom the shelter at home has only isolated them further from life around them, for those that are suffering economically, and for those who are wondering where their place in this world is. Lord, we lift them up to you. And we also ask that you would let us know what we need to do to bring relief, to bring assurance, to show love, and to represent your kingdom to them. Lord, we pause at this moment to offer up the deepest prayers and concerns that rest upon our hearts. Lord, we give you thanks for receiving our prayer requests, and we give you thanks for the responses that will come out of your great wisdom and within your time. Lord, help us to be patient. Lord, in this time of physical distancing, when we cannot gather in our sanctuary, to worship together, we pray that we would remember that the church is not this building, but it is each of us in our respective homes, in our respective circles, and that bound together by your Holy Spirit, Lord, we can continue to do the good that you have called us to do. Help us to be your church. And help us to do all the good we can, as often as we can, in every place that we can, even as we offer to you the prayer which Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 to 22. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. 
yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yao Ming was a huge star in the NBA. Maybe you remember him standing seven feet, five inches tall. He made a big impression on the NBA until injuries brought an end to his career. Even in retirement, Yao continues to be one of the largest, highest prof profile celebrities in China. And he could have simply retired and lived his life in the comfort of his wealth. But Yao has chosen a different route. He's chosen to use his wealth and platform to become an animal conservation activist. Now in his native country of China, shark fin soup is considered to be a delicacy. But when Yao realized that one in four species of sharks are now endangered, he began to educate the masses on the cruelty of shark fin soup practices and it's resulted in a 91% support of a nationwide ban of shark fin consumption. He's also working to end the poaching of elephants and rhinoceroses for their tusks and horns. You see, rather than taking it easy in retirement, Yao chose to go countercultural to make a difference. He faced opposition along the way, but he endured and overcame it in over order to do good. Over and over in our study of 1 Peter, we've encountered this idea that Christians are different than the surrounding culture, and that these differences create a sort of exilic existence for the early Christian community. In today's reading, the topic arises again, with the author encouraging the readers to continue to live in a way that glorifies Christ, and by continuing to do good even if they face resistance. But this time, the author encourages them and us to, quote, give an accounting of your hope to anyone who asks with gentleness and reverence. That's 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 through 16. And the author obviously sees that the actions of Christians will count more than the content of their thoughts or their beliefs. And he understands that the community if the community is known for doing good. In, a in time, that truth will overcome the lies and the misrepresentations of their oppressors. Now, in their 1989 book, Resident Aliens, Will Williman and Stanley Hauerwa seized onto a similar idea of Christianity being a foothold of a heavenly kingdom in a foreign land. And they loudly proclaimed that, quote, Christianity is more than a matter of new understanding. Christianity is an invitation to be part of an alien people who make a difference because they see something that cannot otherwise be seen without Christ. Right living is more difficult than right thinking. End quote. And it's true. It is more difficult to live right than it is to think right. We Christians have spent so much time trying to fit in with the surrounding culture or trying to transform the culture around us that we often forget to live according to the call of Christ. And we forget to do good to the poor, the sick, the hungry, the unsheltered, the imprisoned, the forgotten, and the oppressed. We forget to love our neighbor 
and we forget to love our enemies, the things that Jesus was all about. Now, I recently saw a meme on Facebook that, in reference to the pandemic shutdown, said, quote, we are all sailing on the same shutdown sea, but we are not all on the same boat. In the same sense of the meme and the scripture, you who have claimed your baptism know that that ritual is not a magical act. It is a reminder of who you belong to. It's a reminder of what boat you have chosen to sail in. If you want to keep your conscience clean, doing good in ways that bring glory to Christ is part and parcel of how you are supposed to live. The passage ends with a proclamation of Christ's redemption, that Christ raised him and that Christ now sits next to God above all authorities and powers in this world. And it reminds us that no matter the circumstance and no matter the situation and no matter the resistance, our good works do not go for nothing. They do make a difference. And God does see our efforts and struggles and will not let them go to waste. So whether you are volunteering at the North Hollywood Interfaith Food Pantry or tutoring low-income students or visiting incarcerated asylum seekers or doing meals on wheels or reading at the library or volunteering at the hospital or helping your elderly neighbor or fighting for the preservation of species or running for mod, whatever you do, it matters. So keep it up. Do all the good you can as often as you can, wherever you can. Do it in a way that glorifies Christ and honors your baptism. Because even in the middle of a pandemic, it does make a difference. Amen. You're the God of this city, you're the King of these people, you're the Lord of this nation, you are. You're the light in this darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are. There is no one like our God. You can do this one of two ways. The first is text to tithe. 
Text the amount you'd like to give to the number on your screens. It's a one-time setup and is fast and simple. You may also send your tithes and offerings to the church office at 4832 Tahunga Avenue in North Hollywood, 91601. Thank you so much for your continued giving. Following worship this morning, everyone is invited to a time of virtual fellowship on Zoom. It begins at 11.30 a.m. You can see the meeting ID on your screens. We hope that you can just pop by and say hello. We would love to see you. On Thursdays at 7 p.m., mark your calendars for Pastor Steve's Second Helpings Bible Study. It's all based on expanding further into the sermon that he preaches on the week before. He hopes that you'll join us. The meeting ID is there on your screens, Thursday at 7 p.m. Now, ways to volunteer. The North Hollywood Interfaith Food Pantry's contact information is on your screens. Please contact Barbara and she will let you know how you can help in person. The pantry needs specifically non-perishable food items, hygiene items like shampoo, soap, lotion, and deodorant, feminine hygiene items, diapers for babies and adults, and also fruit from your trees. Um, all of these items may be dropped off at First Christian Church on Colfax and Moore Park during distribution days, which are Monday and Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Volunteers are going to be on hand to unload your car. You don't even need to get out. If you'd like volunteers to stop by your home to pick up, we can set up a contactless pickup for you. Just contact the church at nohofumc at gmail.com. If you're in need of prayer or any assistance, you can also utilize that email, nohofumc at gmail.com, and we will be able to get you in touch with Pastor Steve, add you to the prayer chain, or help you out in any way that we possibly can. With these things in our hearts and minds, let us conclude this morning's worship service by singing our closing hymn. Show God. From sin and all it says, one with Christ in living, dying by your spirit, children heirs. Oh, how deep your holy wisdom, unimagined all your ways. To your name be glory, honor, with our lives we worship. I'd like to thank you for joining us once again for worship and as we get ready to go forth and face our weeks, I hope that you will remember that the one who has called you, the one who has saved you, and the one who is with you has called you to do good, has called you to do works of light so that the light of Christ might shine in the world. And I say again, do all the good you can as often as you can, wherever you can, for the glory of Christ. Go in peace.